What are the goals of surgery for so-called vascular rings? The goals are simply to remove the external compressive force that is applied to the esophagus and or airway causing symptoms. So one may ask, just because you have a vascular ring, do you need surgery? The short answer is not necessarily, but almost always. There are some adults that we get referred after 30 or 40 years of life, and they have symptomatic vascular rings that we intervene on. So for the most part, when you're found to have a vascular ring, it's because one is having symptoms. So usually that's the time to intervene when you start having symptoms. When families or their local teams reach out to us for a second opinion, we then kind of detail to them what the process is. So we'll need to collect all the medical information, so images, uh, medical reports, including echoes, CTs, any additional studies that the patient has had. So they'll send those on to me. I'll help create the chart, make sure we're not missing anything. I'll pass it on to Dr. Barrett and the team for them to review, and then a second opinion will be rendered. Once that's rendered, I'll pass that back on to the families, and then if they need to take some time to think about how they want to proceed, if they decide they want to come to Boston Children's for Care, then I'll reach back out to them to provide them information regarding housing and just the little logistics that can come up as you're planning such a big trip. The preoperative evaluation consists of truly trying to understand the problem. There may be certain situations where if we look at a CT scan that confirm that there is a vascular ring, it may become fairly straightforward what the treatment strategy is needed, but more often than not, that's not the only thing that we need to assess. Most often than not, patients need an echocardiogram to look at their heart and make sure there's no additional heart-related pathology that needs to be concurrently addressed. They often will need a airway evaluation. We may decide to do that ahead of time from the planned surgical date to have a little more time to come up with alternative treatment strategies if we think that the treatment plan may be different based on particular scenarios. Sometimes that airway evaluation may happen the day of the operation if we're a little more convinced ahead of time with the available information we have that there is one or maybe a very similar strategy to entertain. So the airway evaluation has to be a dynamic airway evaluation that's very important in where we want to make sure that we capture the breathing patterns in different stages, what we call shallow breathing, what we call active or coughing breathing, so make sure how does the airway behave in different scenarios. In addition to that, we may decide to evaluate the esophagus, either just with an esophagram to evaluate the contour and location of the esophagus, make sure there's no additional strictures or any other pathology or abnormalities that we may need to be aware of. Or some kids may need an endoscopy to look at the lining of the esophagus to see how much compression there is inside the esophagus, the character of the compression, etc. Most kids also need a vocal cord assessment to evaluate their vocal cord function as the vocal cords are very important in swallowing and breathing and they're also at risk with these operations and so we want to make sure that both before and after any of these operations all children get a vocal cord exam. So as you can see there's a lot of elements that go into the preoperative evaluation and it's not a one size fits all. It really depends on each child and what their presenting symptoms are and so once we evaluate a patient, decide what particular preoperative studies they need, then it's really aimed at understanding the situation so we can define this custom-made or tailored treatment strategy for them.